Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. In last tutorial, we understand what is Spring Bash and its architectural flow with example, right? So in this tutorial, we'll discuss how to use partitioning to achieve parallel processing in Spring Bash execution. Okay, all right. What is partitioning? In Spring Bash, partitioning means assigning multiple threads to process a range of data sets. So let me simplify this statement with an example. Let's say I have a CSV file with 1000 of row. Now here I want this 1000 row to process with two different thread, thread 1 and thread 2. It means each thread will get 500 row to process, right? So here I can tell to the thread 1 to process row count from 1 to 500 from my CSV file. Similarly, I can tell to the thread 2 to take the next chunk of data sets which is 501 to 1000, right? I can split my CSV row between the different thread and they will execute independently. So now you might have a question here. Hey, can't I use four thread so that each thread can process 250 rows, which will be much faster? Yes, you can do that. Create four thread. Then using partitioning, you can tell each thread to process 250 row so that your job will be splitted by four different steps and each steps will be executed by separate thread asynchronously. Okay. So this is what the exact meaning of partitioning. You split your task and give each task to the independent thread or different thread so that they will execute independently and you will get the better performance. Now let's demonstrate this partitioning use case with our existing code. Okay. So without any further delay, let's get started. So if you remember in our last tutorial, we created a job who will read the CSV file and populate those CSV information to database. And this is what the endpoint we created to trigger the job manually, right? Now if we'll go to the Spring Batch config, here we created the reader who will read from the CSV file. And then we have the processor who will process the record from the uh, CSV. And then we have the writer who will populate those information to the database, right? And also we created the step, we created the job object. Then at the end, we created the task executor to execute our job concurrently. So if anyone not aware about what is the Spring Bias and how it works, you can check out my previous tutorial. I will add the link in video description. Now let's implement the Spring Bias partitioning concept. Okay. So first let me create a package called partition. Next, I will just create a class called column range partitioner or something like that. You can give any name. I will just give column range partitioner. Okay. Just enter it. Then I need to implement this class from there is a interface given by spring batch. Let me type it partitioner. Okay. You can see here org spring framework dot batch dot core. Now let me add the obstruct method which is partition. This is where you need to write the logic to tell to the spring batch, take the chunk based on the grid size, which I'm giving here. Okay. I will name it grid size. So if you remember, we have the thousand of row in our CSV file. Let me go to the CSV file. We have the total row count. Okay. So let's scroll down. We have the total row thousand. Okay. Including header thousand one. So this is where the place we need to split the task or we need to split the row count. Okay. So I have the code handy with me. Let me add it so that I can explain you even while execute our code. I will debug and I will show you how the partitioning works. Okay. Let me add those piece of code. Okay. Let me correct the spelling. That's fine. Let me import the statement. Fine. Since we know we have the CSV file with 1000 row, I just specify the mean is 1 and max is 1000, but always it's recommended to make it generic. Okay. Since I know and we are just testing the partitioning example with the 1000 of row, I just hard code the mean and max here. Then I, I will just get the target size. So max minus mean by grid size. Let's say if I am giving the grid size as, grid size as a 
2 then the target size will be 500 here right so I'll just show you here the number will be 0 start will be mean which is nothing the 1 and end will be start plus target size minus 1 start will be 1 plus target size minus 1 will be 500 okay so it will start from the so I will tell you these two line line number 20 and 21 tell that start from 1 to 500 this is what right start begin with the mean mean is nothing 1 and end is nothing start plus target size minus 1 we have the target size 500 here right then we, I am just looping it and I am just increasing once the one chunk of data is done 1 to 500 then I am just increasing so in the ne next loop the count will be start and end will be 501 to 1000 ok so this is what the simple logic I have added in the, inside this partition method so I will just debug this piece of code and I will show you whatever I explain this is how it will behave ok now since we created this as a bin let me configure this column range partitioner in our spring batch config ok so let me go to the uh, processor writer then I will just add that bin so I will simply create a bin of it public there is a class we created column range partitioner so I will just give this as a method and I will directly return the object of it ok new column range partitioner I will just annotate here at the rate bin now the next step we need to create another bin of partition handler so that we can tell to this particular column range partitioner this is what the number of thread and this is what the grid size and this is what the step who will going to take your task ok so these things we need to configure in our partitioner handler so I will create another class of it or I will create another bin of it partition handler ok then you can name it partition handler then create the object of task executor partition handler fine now here you need to set task executor partition handler dot set grid size which is 2 because I just want to execute this task with two split right one will be 1 to 500 another will be 500 to 1000 if you want 250 you can make it grid size as a 4 but for now I will make it 2 ok I will also show you with 4 guys ok now this task executor partition handler dot set uh, what is that set step you can give but set task executor I, I need to give which we already created right this is the task executor we created but I will just change the uh, piece of code here as well we will not use the simple async task executor we will use the actual implementation I will just change that but before that let me configure the steps here ok here so I will just give task executor partition handler dot set step so here one more trick we need to do we need to create say there will be one step who will do this reader writer processor this will be we can name it slabe slave step and we need to create another step called master step and that master step will invoke this slave step ok I will show you that for now I will just give this as a give this slave step as a input to my partition handler so I will just annotate this as a address bin and now I just need to execute or I just need to change the logic of this task executor so the simple step I will just create the object let me remove this I will create the object of thread pool task executor fine then here I will just give task executor dot set max pool size I will give 4 then I will set the core pool size you can use the same what we have added before 
but let's use the thread pool task executor okay task executor dot set q capacity will be 4 then finally i will just return it that's fine we just added there okay now see here this job is crying now right because we changed the name of our existing step to slave step and we are giving this slave step to this handler now here in the job we need to give the master uh, step okay so simply what i'll do i'll just copy this i'll just change the name here master okay step that's fine also i'll change the name of this step and this i'll name the master step fine so in master step we are not going to write the reader processor and writer logic because it is there in our slave step okay so here simply what i want to do i just want to set my partitioner okay he, he, where you can give the step name and your handler class so our step name is nothing get the name from our slave step dot get name and you can give the reference of your partition handler that's fine right now you can also not yeah you can also give the partition handler here that's fine this is enough see guys the logic is very simple all the reader writer everything will be done by this left step and we have the partition handler where we specify the grid size, grid size and task executor and we are giving this slave step as an input to this partition handler and now that partition handler we are giving input to the master step right so yeah this is what the simple logic now this master step i need to give to my job so job will take the input as a master step then it will go to the step and it will check what is the partitioner and what is the step which i need to execute and what is the partitioner handler it will go to and check this partitioner bin it will execute all the logic whatever you wrote here then again it will go to the uh, what is that partitioner handler and it will execute all the step whatever the things you mention here so the hierarchy is bit different initially we give in a single step and here now we created multiple steps that's fine let me see where is the error okay i missed the return statement return this task executor partition handler and one more thing i just need to change now here i just set the grid size as a 2 right it means i want one grid will execute with the 500 of chunk size right that is what we understood in our ppt right thread 1 will execute from 1 to 500 thread 2 will execute from 501 to 1000 so that is why i just set the chunk size as a 500 that's fine now now what we need to do if you remember the execution or the this particular principle now we want to save 1 to 500 record with the thread 1 in a single shot right so we can use something called customer repository dot save all but if you remember in our item writer uh, okay let me exp show you yeah this were the writer we just used save method right but now i want to i want one thread will execute 500 row in a single shot so since we are using this repository item writer which is specific to spring data jpa so rather than use this save i need to use the save all method so what i will do i will just remove this bin i will create a class separate class let me create a class called uh, customer writer or something like that fine i just need to implement this from item writer and i just need to give the generic which is the entity customer this is what i want to write right so let me refactor this i did the spelling mistake fine so customer writer implements from item writer so i'll just annotate here at the right component then here i need to inject my repository right private customer repo customer repository 
I need to inject using AutoAd. That's absolutely fine. Now let me add the method. Not this. Okay. I guess I added the wrong input, a uh, no, wrong input statement. Javax dot batch API. Let me check that. Okay. So it should be Spring batch, guys. Let me add the input class. It should be Spring batch, not from the Javax batch. Now just add the method. It have the single method. Right. Fine. Now here you can directly use customer repository dot save all. You can give this list. Fine. So that 500 row will save directly. Now here to show you that it will be executed by the two thread. What I'll do, I'll just use the s out to st s out statement. Uh, here something I can write thread name. Who's doing this job? Because see guys, the request will come here two times. One with the row count 1 to 500 and second with 500 1 to 1000 that is why I just want to show there will be two different thread who will do this job okay so that is why what I will do I will just use thread dot current thread dot get name fine this is what the thread name now this writer I need to inject because we remove the bean of writer right I will just inject this private customer writer uh, customer writer repository not required now I will remove this see this writer I need to give uh, in our step that's fine so the approach is simple let me rem remove this so in our existing code we had this reader we have the processor and we just created our own writer to set or to save chunk of data in a single sort. Then we created this column range partitioner. You can go here. This is where the logic we had added. Okay. Now then we just created a handler. There we specify the grid size, task executor and step who will do the read write process and that slave step again we are giving to the master step with the partitioner logic and then we are giving this to job fine let me format this fine I believe we are good now let me cross verify all the component once again we have this reader we have this line mapper we have this processor so I believe last time we added a filter on the processor right so I just want to process the thousand of row from my CSB so I don't want to add any filter here right now I will just remove this Okay, I'll just add the, I'll just return the customer object. That's fine now. Now go back to the config. Then we have the partitioner, we have the handler, and we have the step. In handler, we are giving this task executor, right? So you can remove this from this slave step. That's fine. We have the master step, and we are giving the slave step and partitioner here all good now let me start my application it will take few seconds so you can see here application is started on port 9191 now let me go to the controller class this is where the URL go to the postman then yeah this is the url right to trigger the job so what i will do let me clear this console and also i will verify there should not be any table since we started our application we can see the all the table here let me drag this yeah all the table are created by spring batch now i'll just go to the postman i'll just trigger the request you can see here it took 1983 millisecond and if you will go to the console it fire all the query here because we enable the show SQL so we can see here and now if you observe in partition 0 it started from 1 to 500 and in partition 1 it started from 501 to 1000 okay 
and you can see here there are two different thread task executor 1 and task executor 2 so as i explained in the ppt this is what we did right two thread we split the row to target size as a 500 because you give the grid size as a 2 so that is why the target size we are getting 500 if you'll give grid size as a 4 then target size will be 250 and then you'll find here four partition i'll show you uh, but let's verify in the database as well i will just execute this there will be one job execution id and status is completed there is no exception and then we'll check the step execution so here you will find the interesting one there will be one step which will be master step and there will be two slave step because of the two grid size one is the partition 0 one is the partition 1 that is what we can see here in console right 0 and 1 now if you will verify in the DV this is what the start time end time and you can see all the status is completed and then if you will verify this is what the write count ok read count and write count ok so you can see here guys then there is no skip and exit code is completed now what I will do I will just uh, debug the code and I will show you how the column range partitioner will work so let me stop this and meanwhile I will also clear the DV I will delete all the table yes skip all delete I don't know I am not getting the option to drop all the table uh, in this DV here but I am not sure maybe there will be some solution I am not sure at this stage what I will do I will just start my application in the debug mode but I will just add a debugger here let me add the debugger here fine I just want to show you how the number is getting increased based on your input So what we'll do, we'll just change it to the grid size as a 4 and I want each thread will read 250 chunk of row or size. Okay. Now what else? I believe we are good. So the loop will be here. The loop will be rooted four times and each times you will find the start and end time change. So let me debug that and then I will show you. Okay. So let's start in the debug mode. It will take again few seconds. So application started. Now let me clear this. Go to the postman. Send the request. So request came here. Let me show you. So mean will be one, row size, row count one, and the max will be thousand for now. Now you can see the target size we are getting 250 because we provided the grid size as a four. Okay. Now let's go next. Now the start is mean, which is one. Then end will be your 250. So you can see here. Now the start is one, and end is 250. You can see this is where the start and end. Now here it will check start less than equal to max. Okay. So it came inside. Then it will go here. Then it will again check because it need to validate up to thousand row, right? It will always check end greater than equal to max. False. It will go out. Okay. Now in the next loop, again it will just increase the size by your grid size. You can check here. Now you can see here the start will be 251 and end will be 500. In next loop, the start will be 501 sorry 500 and end will be 750 the next 751 and 1000 I will show you directly you can I will directly show you the start and end ok you can see here start is 501 750 next time it will be 751 and 1000 because see at end based on your grid size you need to split that to the four thread guys ok so I will just so the last one 
see here the last one is 751 and 1000 now simply I will just pass it ok resume fine now let's check in the postman status is 200 it took 2 minute uh, more than 2 minute because we just debugging it right and now if you we'll go to the console you can see here guys the target size is 250 and there is 4 partition now partition 3 partition 2 1 and 0 and each partition take the 250 of chunk you can see here partition 0 begin with 1 row 1 2 250 partition 1 begin with the 250 1 to 500 2 begin with the 500 1 to 750 and similarly 3 begin with the 751 to 1000 and there are four different thread you can see here right now if we'll go and verify in the db let me refresh this if we'll check the step execution there are master step and there are uh, four partition step created which is nothing our slave step okay that is how we are configuring in our code so this is how guys you can implement the partitioning in spring bash to execute your uh, file concurrently and you have the control over the thread you can assign thread to execute which row based on your need okay and you can define n number of thread as per your requirement and this is this will really give you the better performance so try this application once i will share the source code link in the video description do let me know in comment section if you guys have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept